Using existing data sets. This is a quick and brief summary of this specific research method. The use of existing data sets is also called secondary data analysis, as well as retrospective analysis. It relies on the use of previously collected data that is secondary to the original purpose. This data is collected when your supervisor or colleague requests the use of these previously studied data. You may want to utilize publicly available research, uh, historical or archival data, such as voting or census records, for example. It is also quite useful to use previous longitudinal and population representative studies as the research are revealed to the public domain and there's no point on reinventing the wheel. Advantages of using these existing data sets include that it is easier and faster. It has access to populations or phenomena that you would otherwise not have access to, such as minority groups for example. Some types of research studies can't be done by yourself, such as birth cohorts and longitudinal research. The use of data can increase research transparency, as other researchers also have access to this data, which can boost replicability of the statistical analysis and thus is even more ethical. Using existing data sets, however, have a number of disadvantages. You don't have control over how the data is collected. There is also a mismatch between the study design measures used and your own research question and hypothesis. This is because the study was designed for different intended research questions to your own. Some data sets are paid to access. There are often non-experimental study designs. And lastly, uh, you usually have to work with other people since you are using their research. There are a number of research methods involved in the use of existing data sets. Firstly, you must determine your research question, such as uh, as to what area it is about, define the research question and propose some hypothesis about the relevant gap in the literature. Secondly, find the appropriate data set for your research question. Sometimes data set selection is dependent on your supervisor. Thirdly, identify the studies, sample, design and variables. You may want to ask what is the population of interest and how can your constructs become operationalized. Fourthly, you should redefine your hypothesis in light of actual variables, revising and redefining them to suit what the data utilizes. Fifthly, analyze data by showing summaries of descriptive statistics and conduct a formal analysis to address the hypotheses. And then finally, write up the results and make conclusions as to how this affects the research question and hypotheses. You might want to give a detailed account as to compromises between the research question and data sets used. Things to consider include the need for ethical approval since data is being used for purposes other than its original intention. You need to know how much you compromise variables and the design in how it could undermine your conclusions. Analytical methods used need to be dependent on the sampling design. In big data sets, be sure to decide significance levels and effect sizes of interest since the sample size would be huge, thus increasing the likelihood of uh, making type 2 errors, which is stating something is significant when it is not. Larger sample size increases the significance since p-values are inversely proportionate to the sample size. Also, longitudinal projects have lots of random or missing data due to attrition or people dropping out of studies. So, in conclusion, we reviewed uh, the use of existing data sets. We looked at what existing data sets entail, the advantages and disadvantages of existing data sets, the method in which uh, one goes about using the existing data sets and then finally some ethical uh, considerations as well as other considerations such as significance level effect size uh, risk of type 2 error etc etc and yeah i guess join me for the next video in assessing research thanks for watching